Setting up a multi-camera live stream or podcast has always been complicated and expensive. That is, until now. This is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini, and for $300, it lets you switch between four HDMI inputs live. And before we begin, I just wanna make sure you know this video is sponsored by me and my paycheck because I'm the one who bought all of these things and this video is not sponsored in any way. I think that's important because it's going to be a pretty glowing review. In fact, to just jump to the end and spoil the whole thing, out of a 10 star rating, I would give the A10 Mini 11 out of 10. The numbers all go to 11. And that's definitely not because I'm a huge fan of Blackmagic products. I actually tend to not like them very much. You might remember my video about the Elgato Cam Link where I talked about how much more I like it than the Blackmagic Mini Studio Recorder, which I really dislike a lot. In general, Blackmagic has a lot of really good ideas and they have so many products and some of them are truly excellent and some of them are truly awful. And a lot of them I have found in my personal experience tend to be in the middle where it's a great idea with a really funky execution. And while the ATEM Mini has a few areas for improvement, this is an absolutely groundbreaking device. And as far as I'm concerned, it's perfect. And so despite my long-standing hesitation to use Blackmagic products, this ATEM Mini has really captured my attention. But in order to understand that, I think it's important for me to give a little bit of context within the world of video switchers. So I got my very first job back in 2001 working at a TV news station where they had a production switcher from a company called the Grass Valley Group. And it looked something like this, and it cost, when it was new, upwards of $100,000. And obviously, considering that was purchased in the 1990s, it was not a high definition switcher by any means. It only output in standard like 480p <laughs> definition. And it wasn't really designed to be purchased by individuals by any means. With a price like that and with the size of, you know, being a NASA mission control center, it was intended to be purchased by large corporations and network affiliates and customers like that. And after that, in 2016, I came to this school where part of my job was to set up a live daily broadcast program. And I've talked about that quite a few times before. But the first thing I did was look for a mixer and this is the one that we ordered, which is the Roland V40. And this mixer is a four input mixer. Um, it does take HDMI, SDI, RGB components. So it's very versatile on what it takes. And it's super reliable. It's really fussy about like making sure every input has the same frame rate resolution and the output to match and all that. But once you get everything matching, this sucker's very reliable. The thing is this four channel mixer at the time we got it, it cost $6,000. So it's literally one of the most expensive single pieces of equipment in this whole studio. And if I'm sweating right now, the air conditioner is broken. It's like 100 degrees in here. And so about two years ago, we actually replaced that with the Blackmagic TV Production Studio. And this mixer is an eight channel mixer. And that was a big thing that I wanted was to be able to have more inputs because with four, we could do three cameras and like graphics on a computer or video playback. Now we can do you know, seven cameras plus some video playback. And the thing about this Blackmagic mixer when it first came out is it was about $2,000, which is the cheapest I had ever seen a production switcher, especially considering it has eight inputs. It does definitely have some quirks, but for the price, I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. So this became our studio mixer and the Roland mixer is one that we use for mobile live streams. But again, this was $6,000, this was $2,000, which is why this little Blackmagic mixer is so incredible. For $300, this does almost everything that that Roland $6,000 four channel mixer does. But the thing about this also is it's so friendly with resolutions and frame rates. You can plug in pretty much any HDMI source, computer, TV, console, camera, frame rate, whatever and it will convert it to whatever you set it as an output and it will do everything at 1080p. You don't have any other options besides 1080, but it does give you 23.98 all the way up to 60 frames per second. So that's $300, $6,000, $2,300. So with all that being said, while this might not be a perfect, perfect device for what it does for $300, I don't think there's really any legit criticism you can throw at it, other than the fact it doesn't have a power button. Blackmagic has a thing where they just don't like putting power switches on their devices, which is insane. 
I luckily have been able to just hook this up to like a wall plug thing that lets me control it with the remote control. So when I want to turn it off, I can push a button here and it turns the switcher off and I can push a button here and it will turn the switcher back on. But otherwise the only way to turn this on and off is to literally unplug it, which is just silly. The same is true for the $2,000 TV production studio that we have at work. Just put a power button on your products, come on. It doesn't take any kind of black magic to see that that is a smart thing to do. But beyond that, and especially considering this is marketed for you know, a home streamer or a consumer, this does everything that you need it to do and it just kind of gets out of the way. Each channel has its own audio input. So you can choose by pressing AFV, which is audio follows video. That means every time you cut to that angle, the switcher will take the audio from that angle as well. These little up and down arrows let you adjust the volume of that input. And in addition to that, there are also two 3.5 millimeter inputs on the back that you can turn on or off and adjust the input level. Now, unfortunately, you can't see what the level is. You just have to turn it up, turn it down, and probably use your software to monitor it. But one thing I like to do is I've plugged my VideoMic Pro Plus directly into this, and it has worked terrific as an audio source. But typically when I'm using this, it's with the Rodecaster Pro. I just plug the monitor outputs into one of these 3.5 millimeter jacks. And then I have all of the inputs, all of the sound effects, all of the capabilities of the Rodecaster Pro available as I'm doing any kind of streaming or online classes. And that's really where I decided to purchase this thing. And where it has totally been a lifesaver is starting this school year virtually and online instead of in the classroom like normal. It was about two weeks before school started and I realized, oh my gosh, it's not just enough to have a camera that I can talk to my students with, but I'm probably gonna wanna switch to different camera angles as I'm doing that. And then uh, that's what made me realize this was gonna be the perfect thing for my setup. And then from there, it can be used in live streams. When Heather and I do our weekly podcast, sometimes we play around with it. And the reason that I know that it is really good is because oftentimes when I get my new camera gear, Heather, my wife, is just kind of like, oh, that's cool. And when I got this, she was legitimately excited about it because of the capabilities that it provides. So the fact that something like this can bring that excitement out in almost anyone who encounters it, I think is really cool. And it's not that you even just have to switch live. If you're using software like OBS, you can record directly into that software and it will record all of your switches and all of your camera moves. There are some other basic functions built in. You can do picture in picture, some very basic transitions and some basic keying. And even though this is designed to be simple and user friendly, if you do want to take it a step further and add in some more advanced features, you can use the ATEM mini software control on your computer, which is a free download from Blackmagic's website. And that essentially turns this into the same thing as like the TV production studio that I have at work. It's got all your inputs here. You can add in bars and transitions and keyers and chroma. There's even a media pool. So if you wanted to add in still images, unfortunately it doesn't do video. You can just drag up to 20 still images in here and then make them live. So for example, if I drag an image to one of these windows, then it pops up and now it will be live there. And then on the switcher itself, if I press the still button, that will transition to whichever image is selected over there. You can also adjust your audio much more finely than you can on here. You can see the audio inputs from every source and adjust them specifically. And if you are using Blackmagic cameras, of course, they're going to be more compatible with this and you can jump in and control all the color and all of the fine tuning of your connected cameras. I don't have any Blackmagic cameras, but that is a capability built into this, which is huge. So it's not even just a basic four channel mixer. There's a lot of, this button is flashing. So it's not even that, what are you doing? So it's not even that this is just a simple mixer. It has a lot of really cool built in features to the hardware component and then goes through the roof once you bring in the software component if you wanna take it to that level. Now in learning more about this switcher after I got it, I found a great YouTube channel by a guy named Aaron Parecki where he kind of dives into like every possible setting in a very detailed way. So if you wanna know the absolute technical capabilities of this, I think he does a better job than I ever could of explaining that. What I wanna do is explain how something like this fits into my workflow in a really practical, down-to-earth kind of way. It's also important to mention that Blackmagic does have an ATEM Mini Pro, which goes for around $500 and just has a few more of those pro-level features, like a multi-camera output, so just like back at my 
job with our bigger switcher. You can see all your inputs and then select from them on a monitor. That's definitely much more of a traditional live stream setup. Now on the back, there are the four HDMI inputs along with the HDMI output, which can go to a reference monitor. And I actually have found that to be very helpful because I use this most of the time currently with Zoom and you don't really get a good preview window of Zoom before the meeting actually starts. So having that monitor up there, so I know even if I'm sharing a screen or whatever, having that set up is a great way to let me know what camera angle I have and, and that it looks okay. And then the fourth input I actually have from my old MacBook Pro so I can run like keynote presentations or play videos because I have found that playing the video from the switcher gives me better quality over Zoom than just doing a screen share and trying to play a video and it sounds all garbly and, and terrible and whatnot. There's also the USB-C connector which will let you connect it to the computer. There's the two audio inputs. There's also a, an ethernet connection so you can run this over a network and then of course the power jack. Connecting this to your computer via USB-C is what also lets it act as an interface. So I don't even use it with something like the Cam Link. This takes care of all that itself and it shows up as a webcam in your software. So for example, if I open up Zoom and then I go into Preferences and click on Video, it shows up as an input option. There's of course the built-in FaceTime camera, which is just horrible quality. <laughs> and then there is there are two options for Blackmagic. There's 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. All of my cameras are really actually set to 24. It doesn't really matter. Everything looks fine, so who cares? <laughs> and this is my second angle. Here's my third angle you can see over here. Normally the fourth one is where my computer be would be, and the first one would typically be this camera, but right now it's not connected to the switcher. If you go into audio, it will also show up Blackmagic Design as an audio source, and typically for a Zoom meeting, I will select that because the Rodecaster Pro will be running into this and then that will set it up as my audio source. And the same thing would be true in a program like OBS or whatever you're using to stream. I've used it with StreamYard, I've used it with YouTube Studio. You can just select the Blackmagic ATEM Mini as its own like interface and then whatever you have connected to it will automatically show up. So it's very easy, it's really plug and play. And then you can kind of see any switches I make on the software also take place on the switcher itself. And there is, just like a more traditional mixer, there's a program and preview settings. So if you're using the software and you wanna do that, essentially what that means is program, this red button is whatever is active. So if I wanna to switch to camera two or camera three, this is usually the easiest way to do it if you're just one person kind of manning your stream. Traditionally, in a broadcast setting, what they will do is have a preview. So I have camera one active now, I'll preview input number three, and then I will cut between them. And that just prevents you from making mistakes and switching to something before it's ready or accidentally. Let's you make sure your next shot is ready to go before you take it live. And you can actually set that up in this software so that this does work that way. So when you download the ATEM Mini app, it does include the software control, but it also includes something called ATEM Setup. And if I open that up, it's gonna give me the option to change a few things. One of them is the switching mode. I can switch from program to cut. And if I switch it to program preview and save, and now you can see if I wanna switch from angle one to angle three, I press three, but it doesn't go live yet. It turns green, meaning it's in preview mode. And then I can press cut to actually take it. And now camera one becomes the preview. If I press auto, that will automatically do whichever transition I want. So you can kind of see both options are then red, which means it's transitioning between them and then it switches once they're done. So it just depends on what your workflow is, what you're used to, how you're using the ATEM Mini, which one would be best for you. I, I can't believe that this costs $300. This is something that thousands of dollars was the minimum price you would pay for this functionality up until now. So while there are weird things, you know, it would be great if it had a multi-view output. It'd be great if it had a power switch. Sure, it'd be great if you could see the level of the volume when you're pushing these buttons up and down. But for $300, the capabilities that it provides to you, there's no room to argue. The Elgato Cam Link is a one source capture card that has none of the switching capabilities and it's one third the price. So for $100, you get one camera and nothing else. For $300, you get four cameras, plus all the audio processing, plus all that software support. That's an unbelievable deal, and it puts multi-camera broadcasting right into the hands of pretty much everybody. Now, is this something you need for your live stream to be successful? No, absolutely it's not. Like I just mentioned, the something like the Elgato Cam Link, if you just need one really nice camera connected to your computer, 
one little HDMI capture card like this is definitely the way to go and you can get stuff that looks terrific. But if you wanna switch between sources easily on the fly, this is unreal and having a hardware switcher, a physical thing that controls that makes it so much easier than having to like go in here and click a mouse button and do all that kind of stuff. You can just push a physical button, sometimes without even looking, I can just push the button and I know which one it is and it's gonna switch the angle and I'm gonna look super slick on camera and my students are gonna think I'm awesome, more awesome than they already do and that's ultimately the point, right? It's for people to just think you're even more awesome than they already do. <laughs> that's not the point.